So my name is Angu, but I mean, obviously, what kind of name is that? It's not really my name. But it's just that people in the West struggle to say my name, so I've made it easy. I think my name is too many syllables. Uh, any Kipling fans out there, by the way? Rudyard Kipling fans? <laughs> no, I guess not. So Rudyard Kipling is this author who uh, wrote this book in the 1920s. Anyway, I just wanted to know who knew him. Anyway, coming back to my name, uh, <laughs> Angu is short for, if you're ready for it, you can repeat after me, white man's burden. <laughs> like it just doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> Maybe you should Google it because it comes from Kipling, and I've just decided to adopt that name and shorten it to Angu. Uh, anyway, uh, no, I, sh I should make this a set about race and things like that. Right? Let's leave that on the side. Like, that's not good. Uh, no, the reason I go by white man's burden is just that women refuse to carry the burden that is on uh, stage right now. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, I. I tried to like fix this problem over lockdown by growing my hair out. <laughs> but what happened as a result of that is that everyone started comparing me to everyone's favorite cult hero who looks like a party. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, you know, I'm a curious guy. I was like, I need more uh, answers to questions like, what is the similar between Jesus and me? Like, how tall was he? Did that affect his dating life? So, <laughs> I went to this one-stop shop, uh, which has all the answers. Uh, it's Christianity.com. And asked them, literally, how tall was Jesus? <laughs> and they sort of tell you that uh, scholars and scientists, and scientists, not just scholars, have uh, estimated that Jesus is between 5 feet 1 and 5 feet 5. Now, for those of you on the dating market, I'll have you know that that four inch window <laughs> changes everything. Because I'm five feet nine, but if my friends introduce me to someone, I'm like, you know, he's between five feet nine and six feet. It changes everything. Like, like, swipe right to swipe left. The answer is right there. Like, while I didn't learn what Jesus' height actually was, what I did find out is that, uh, you know why he's single? You know, like, why is it that, That's all I know about Jesus now. Like, and of course, maybe some party characteristics, but, you know, this is not even supposed to be a set about race, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, I'm on stage to tell you a story about this time I took a train from uh, Delhi to Rishikesh uh, in December 2020. I was back in India for my uh, favorite secular holiday, lockdown two. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who don't know what Rishikesh is, uh, Rishikesh is like probably the world's most famous yoga teacher training retreat. So if you have any friends who've uh, you know, been posting these uh, Instagram selfies on the edge of a cliff, then you want to push them off a cliff, they're probably <laughs> in Rishikesh. And uh, but the thing is, they think they're neoliberal hippies, these people, right? I mean, they are neoliberal hippies when you think about it. Because they're in Rishikesh doing all this yoga stuff, but on an average day, they're at your uh, average Extinction Rebellion protest, Sipping on a skinny uh, flat white from Starbucks complaining about capitalism. <laughs> right? like, it's just mind blowing. But these are the kinds of people who go to Rishikesh. Uh, so, anyway, I'm on this train with my friend, and we've just left. We're two stops away from Delhi, and like a few seats down from us, these two gay dudes, I think they're from California, they have these California surfer vibe look. You know, uh, they come on the train, and just to clarify what the circle vibe look is, right? Like, they've got long hair, they've got beautiful bronze skin. They're basically me, <laughs> but more like Jason Momoa and less pear shaped than me, right? <laughs> action going on. So, that's like the fundamental difference. It's not too bad. But by the way, Jason Momoa is the guy who plays Aquaman, which makes no fucking sense. Because Aquaman is the king of Atlantis, right? Like, he's like 10,000 meters super deep. How the fuck is he brown? <laughs> and, uh, I, I'm like, so, you know, these two gay Californian servers come on the train, and my friend is getting super antsy, and I'm like, she's not homophobic, I know that. But is it taking her back in time when we both lived in America, and, you know, we had this sort of like, you know, there's just like some kind of stereotype profiling, racial profiling that happens. And I'm like, maybe she, she's been taken down memory lane. I mean, I know what it's like, right? Like, I look like a terrorist. And there are three groups of people who categorize me that way. Uh, one is people on public transport, immigration check officers, and my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my parents. Like, I get out of an airport in America to go see them, and I pass immigration check, and then my parents are like, why do you come looking like that? <laughs> anyway, you know, it's, it's a good segue, I think, at this point, because 
the last set of people who come on the train and they're sitting right across from us are these two Muslim dudes who have these long beards. And my friend just gets up and bolts. And I'm like, okay, I, I've got to follow her, right? Like, I mean, she's, she's left and she's not going to come back. She's taken her bags too. And I know you are all thinking that she's probably a racist, a bigot, a homophobe, and all these things, but I'll have you know, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what the color of your skin, or what your sexual orientation is. It's not all right to come on public transport. Anyway, that's been me. Who is still struggling with that story. <laughs> that, uh, most of my friends found that story funnier a second time. <laughs> and I think it's kind of biblical in some ways, because it's all about that second coming. <laughs>